What would you do if you had access to billions of dollars? Quite a predicament, isn't it? Now let me introduce you to Truong Mylan, a woman who found herself in this very situation and is at the heart of the world's biggest bank scam. Born in the late 50s, Lan is a Vietnamese businesswoman with Chinese heritage. She began her journey with a humble business selling hair accessories in Ho Chi Minh City. From these modest beginnings, her ambitions soared high, and she ventured into the world of real estate. In 1992, she founded the Van Thin Fat Group, a company specializing in luxury residential buildings, offices, hotels, shopping centers, and financial services. Under her guidance, the group made a significant impact on the real estate market. But how did this successful businesswoman become implicated in a $12.5 billion scam? Stay tuned to uncover the story behind this billion-dollar question. From humble beginnings, Lan built an empire. Truong Mai Lan, a Vietnamese businesswoman with a Chinese lineage, started her journey with a small business for hair accessories in bustling Ho Chi Minh City. Unbeknownst to many, she was on the cusp of a meteoric rise in the business world. In 1992, she planted the seeds of a venture that would grow to dominate Vietnam's real estate scene, the Van Thin Fat Group. Under her astute leadership, the group specialized in luxury residential buildings, offices, hotels, shopping centers, and financial services. Lan's vision and tenacity transformed the Van Thin Fat Group into a business behemoth, leaving an indelible mark on the real estate landscape. But this was only the tip of the iceberg. Lan's influence extended far beyond the real estate sector. She held the reins of Saigon Joint Stock Commercial Bank, or SCB, Vietnam's largest bank by assets. A staggering 93% of loans issued by the bank went to her company and associated straw companies. It was a masterstroke of business acumen, or so it seemed. The fusion of three failing banks into SCB allowed Lan to maintain her control through intermediaries. Despite not holding any official positions within SCB, her sway over the bank was substantial. Between 2012 and 2022, she held a controlling stake in SCB, ranging from 85 to 91.5%. Lan was a puppet master, pulling the strings behind the scenes. Yet, it was this very power that would lead to her downfall. As Lan's influence grew, so did the scrutiny surrounding her business dealings. The sheer magnitude of her control over SCB raised eyebrows and eventually, red flags. The spotlight was now on Lan, and her empire was about to be shaken to its very core. But with great power comes great scrutiny. Lan's story serves as a stark reminder that in the world of business and finance, unchecked ambition can lead to unparalleled success, or precipitate a fall from grace. The next chapters of her tale reveal the complexities of power, wealth, and accountability in the business world. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the rise and fall of Truong Mai Lan. In October 2022, Lan's world came crashing down. The fusion of three banks teetering on the brink of bankruptcy in 2011, had led to the establishment of the Saigon Joint Stock Commercial Bank, SCB. Despite not holding any official positions within the bank, Lan's control was substantial. She held a controlling stake in SCB, ranging from 85 to 91.5% between 2012 and 2022. Her influence was not just limited to the boardroom, Lan's control extended to the bank's loan practices, where a staggering 93% of loans went to her company and associated straw companies. But how did she maintain this level of control? The answer lies in her intricate network of over two dozen intermediaries. Through this elaborate web of middlemen, Lan continued her control over SCB, even after its formation from the fusion of the three banks. This network also played a crucial role in the execution of her alleged scam. The charges against her are grave and numerous, including illegally issuing bonds and using an astounding 916 fake loan applications, to siphon off billions from SCB. The day of reckoning arrived in October 2022, when the authorities arrested Lan. The charges were serious, embezzlement, bribery, and violating banking regulations. The alleged embezzlement alone amounted to a mind-boggling VND304 trillion approximately $13 billion. This made it the largest financial scandal in Southeast Asia, a dubious distinction indeed. 
the magnitude of Lon's alleged scam is truly staggering. To put it in perspective, the scale of this corruption scandal surpasses even the infamous Malaysian One MDB scandal. The repercussions were felt far and wide, shaking the financial foundations of Vietnam and rippling across the Southeast Asian business world. As we peel back the layers of this scandal, we find a complex web of power, wealth, and accountability intricately woven together. And at the center of this web, we find Truong Mai Lan, a businesswoman who rose from running a small hair accessories shop to allegedly masterminding the biggest bank scam in history. Now, Lan faces her day in court. As the gavel strikes in the Ho Chi Minh City People's Court, it marks the beginning of a trial that will go down in history. It's March 2024, and the courtroom is abuzz with anticipation. This isn't just any trial. It's the trial of Truong Milan, the woman at the center of the largest corruption scandal in Southeast Asia's history. The charges are grave, embezzlement, bribery, violating banking regulations, all amounting to a staggering $13 billion. The scale of this scandal surpasses even the infamous Malaysian 1 MDB scandal. But Lan isn't alone in the dock. Alongside her are 85 others including her husband, niece, daughter, and a host of middlemen, all entangled in this intricate web of deceit. There's a hush as Lan, the 68-year-old real estate tycoon, steps forward. She maintains her innocence, asserting that she only owned a 5% stake in SCB, but the prosecution argues otherwise, claiming her control extended far beyond her official stake, through a network of fake companies and straw men. The potential consequences if convicted are severe. This is Vietnam, where white-collar crimes are met with harsh punishments. If found guilty, Lan could face the death penalty, a sobering prospect for someone who once sat atop a business empire. As Lan's defense team present their case, one thing is clear, they have a mountain to climb. The evidence against her is overwhelming. Police have seized millions of dollars in cash and frozen assets linked to Lan, intended for compensation and repayment. Yet she remains defiant, a stark contrast to other defendants who have admitted to their charges. This isn't just a trial about financial misconduct, it's about power, wealth, and accountability. It's about a woman who rose from a humble hair accessories business to controlling Vietnam's largest bank, and the alleged fraud that fueled her ascent. The stakes are high, and the world watches on. The fallout from the scandal is far-reaching. As the dust begins to settle, we're left to pick through the rubble of what was once a towering empire. Truong Mai Lan, the powerhouse of the Van Thin Fat Group, now stands in the shadow of her own making. The magnitude of the financial misconduct she is accused of is simply staggering, amounting to approximately $13 billion. The fallout is not limited to Lan's personal life and business empire. The ripples of the scandal have spread far and wide, casting a long shadow over Vietnam's banking and real estate sectors. The authorities have seized millions of dollars in cash and frozen assets linked to Lan, intended for compensation and repayment. These funds offer a stark visual of the sheer scale of the alleged fraud, a chilling testament to the extent of the deception. The trial is ongoing, and the world watches with bated breath as the curtain slowly peels back on one of the largest financial scandals in Southeast Asian history. The potential consequences for Lan are severe. If found guilty, she could face the death penalty, a chilling prospect for a woman who once stood at the helm of a multi-billion dollar empire. As we near the conclusion of this dramatic saga, one can't help but reflect on the remarkable journey of Truong Mai Lan. From a small businesswoman selling hair accessories in Ho Chi Minh City to the founder of a real estate empire, Lan's story is a fascinating tale of ambition, achievement, and ultimately, a fall from grace. The story of Truong Mai Lan, once a symbol of ambition and achievement, now serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of power, wealth, and accountability. Her tale serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that unchecked ambition and power can lead to a precipitous fall. As this story continues to unfold, we are left to ponder the cost of ambition, the price of success, and the delicate balance of power, wealth, and accountability. As we await the final verdict, one question remains. Truong Mai Lan, once a powerful figure in the business world, now stands in the dock, accused of the largest financial scandal in Southeast Asia's history. A staggering $12 billion scam masterminded through Saigon Joint Stock Commercial Bank, which she controlled with an iron fist. A network of straw companies used to siphon billions from the bank's coffers. A tale of ambition, power, and a fall from grace so dramatic, it sends ripples through the world of business and finance. As we stand here in March of 2024, Lan continues to assert her innocence, defying the weight of evidence against her. 
The trial continues and if convicted she could face the ultimate penalty. The scale of this scandal surpasses even the infamous Malaysian 1MDB scandal. A tale of corruption, power and wealth unraveled. What is your opinion on this high-profile case? Share your thoughts in the comments below.